on the issue of uh, IUU fishing, the fundamental problem is this. Fish is the single most traded commodity in the really? world. Yes, it is, according to FAO statistics. Yeah, yeah. Fish, um, even though in the region, you know, we often see fisheries as a, as a marginal industry. Mm -hmm. The truth is, it is a mammoth <laughs> industry. Yeah? There is big money in fishing. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, because of that, there are, unfortunately, persons who uh, continue to engage in illegal, unregulated, unreported fishing. IUU fishing. IUU is a concept meaning illegal, unreported, and unregulated, three, th three elements. But the main focus is on the illegal part, <laughs> where fishing takes place in contravention of national regulations mm -hmm. or uh, international laws that have been established to ensure uh, sustainable use conservation or uh, uh, orderly trade in the uh, fish products. Mm -hmm. Now, IUU fishing is a massive problem globally. It is a massive problem in the region also. Um, it is something that in the Caribbean region we are fighting. Uh, a few years ago in 2010, our ministers responsible for fisheries developed the Castries Declaration on IUU fishing. This is a policy instrument that sets out our aims, our objectives, the principles and the standards and the arrangements that we want to pursue in order to eradicate mm -hmm. illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing from the region and globally. Mm -hmm. Belize operates a, a fleet of uh, large vessels that really fly the Belizean flag and they operate not in Belizean waters, not in the Caribbean, but on the high seas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they operate in the Atlantic Ocean, in the Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean, all around uh, globally. The, the EU decision, recent decision, is in relation to the operation of some of those vessels that the EU alleges um, have been involved in either illegal unreported or unregulated fishing. I don't, I don't know the details, so you know, I can't say exactly what it is. The EU in 2007-2008 uh, developed a regulation specifically dealing with IUU fishing, and this came in force in 2010. Um, a, a large part of the EU's objective really is to ensure better regulation of vessels that fly the flag of a state uh, and operate on the, on, the, on the high seas or uh, through um, access agreements, mm -hmm. in some cases, in the waters under the jurisdiction of um, states. Um, because uh, the EU is of the opinion that these vessels, the fleets that uh, fly and operate through these open registers, they call them. Sometimes you hear them referred to as flags of convenience, but I'd rather use the word open registers. Um, that the vessels that allow these, sorry, the countries or the states that allow these vessels to fly their flags very often do not and are not able to exercise effective control mm -hmm. over the operation of these vessels that may be operating Thousands They're of largely on monitored. Uh, well, uh, nowadays, and I know in the case of Belize, the mm -hmm. vessels are all required to use vessel monitoring systems because mm -hmm. you do have technology now that allows you to monitor the operation of the vessels. Mm -hmm. Okay, but monitoring the operation. These are electronic the devices. Right, these are electronic devices. But that's one thing. Mm -hmm. um, monitoring and knowing where they are is one thing. Um, being able to exercise effective control. Mm -hmm. Over them is another, is another thing. A country is responsible for the activities of their fishing vessels operating on the high seas. They are supposed to exercise effective control. And I think that is, that is at the heart mm -hmm. of the EU's concern, okay. that they want Belize to um, be able to exercise better mm -hmm. control over these vessels so that they should have a system in place mm -hmm 
you know, a system that will guarantee mm -hmm. that these vessels are not involved in IUU fishing, that is illegal, unreported, or unregulated fishing. And in fact, if they are involved, that uh, sanctions can be imposed mm -hmm. and penalties can be imposed and action can be taken to ensure compliance and to punish them for any wrongdoing. So I think that is the heart of the EU concern. Now, I know the government of Belize has already taken certain steps. Yes, the registry right. taken there's a new over. Regu there's a new, the, the registry has been taken over by the government and they're putting in place mm -hmm. um, a system to ensure stronger control. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. The second thing is that uh, they are upgrading the uh, legislation mm -hmm. Um, that governs the operation of these vessels. No. The High Seas Fishing Act. Yeah. That's yeah. a new act that was recently passed by Parliament here. Okay. All right. Well, well, I, mm -hmm. I didn't even know that it has been yes, already passed. passed. So, 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 Correct. so, so, Belize is already taking action mm -hmm. to to um, strengthen its um, control over the operation of these vessels. Because you see, on the other side, it is important, and we we mentioned earlier that um, the fishery resources that's available to us include the resources under our jurisdiction. There are some in our territorial waters. There are some in, in our exclusive economic zone. And there are resources on the high seas mm -hmm. that is beyond your 200 miles exclusive economic zones. And these resources are available to all of our countries. However, in many developing countries, in most Caribbean countries, we do not have the fishing capacity Mm -hmm. to operate on the high seas and to exploit those fishing mm -hmm. opportunities. So we get no benefit from them. So the idea of uh, uh, allowing vessels to fly your flag mm -hmm. and, to, and to be able to operate on the high seas is a, is a legitimate one. And you, um, you know, countries like Belize and other Caribbean countries, St. Vincent notably, um, are are able to access these resources because they allow vessels to fly their flags and to operate. Mm -hmm. Now, this brings a, 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 an, an added advantage. Slowly but surely, access to the resources on the high seas, the fishing opportunities on the high seas, is slowly closing. Yes. And uh, uh, regional fisheries management bodies have been established to cover just about all the areas, mm -hmm. fishing areas, globally. So Belize could find itself without a niche? That's right. Not, not, not just Belize. Countries that do not have a presence mm -hmm. on the high seas, <laughs> mm -hmm. that do not have fishing vessels operating on the high seas, may find themselves shut out, locked out from the opportunities that's available. Because right now, quotas are being allocated to countries. Now who allocates one of these the, on, on, It is these international fisheries bodies like ICAT in the Atlantic oh, okay. for Tunas and you have IATTC, you have the Western and Central Pacific Fisheries Commission in the, in the, mm -hmm. the, the Pacific area. There, there are several such bodies that have been established mm -hmm. over the past 20 years and they are developing conservation and management regimes for the resources on the high seas. They allocate quotas to countries partly on the basis of historical presence. Mm -hmm. So you know who is on the high seas operating now, the big countries, the European Union, United States, mm -hmm. Canada, Japan, etc. Mm -hmm. And those countries have the bulk of the quotas. Yes. So Belize So small countries is, like Belize right, are at a huge disadvantage. Right. Belize is there among them <laughs> with this uh, Maybe they uh, think we don't belong fleet. there. <laughs> well, that may be a part of it, who knows? But yeah, so Belize is there mm -hmm. and Belize is getting a quota. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, uh, right. So, so um, you know, there's competition mm -hmm. for the resource because the resource is limited. Yes. Um, we are in a time when uh, most of the uh, traditional commercially available fishery resources are fully exploited. Mm -hmm. And so the opportunities are limited. It's not a free-for-all like in the past where you had freedom of the seas. And the doctrine, the legal doctrine of freedom of the seas still operates. But in reality, mm -hmm. you are not free just to go and take whatever you want. That's because quite interesting. there are international conservation mm -hmm. regulations in mm -hmm. place, and you must comply with those. And mm -hmm. if you operate on the high seas and you contravene these, or you fish in an, in, in an area on the high seas and you do not have a quota, you, are, you can be accused of being engaged in IUU fishing.